Today for Country Viewpoint, something a little bit different as we talk about grains. We're catching up with the CEO of Grain Producers SA, Brad Perry. How are you, Brad? Yeah, good, thanks, Ricky. Uh, we'll talk in a little moment about an agriculture conference happening in South Australia next week because uh, you and I have got a bit of a role in that. But I did want to just touch base with you about growing conditions and market conditions in the region of South Australia, but also more broadly for Australian growers. They're pretty good wet conditions and the La Nina expected to kick on from the latest Bureau data into the spring. Yeah, things are looking pretty good, um, particularly in, in South Australia, Ricky, I think. Uh, probably a bit drier through July period, um, but now in, in August uh, this month, we've had um, plenty of rain right across the state. Uh, in, in most cropping regions, there's still a few areas that are a little bit dry, um, some areas of the Mallee and, and Mid-North. Um, but generally, uh, it's been pretty wet, um, and from the crops that I've seen, I've uh, been uh, Air Peninsula, York Peninsula, Upper Russell Way. All the crops are looking really good. Um, uh, yeah out of the blocks and uh, and well on the way to a really good season here in South Australia. Yeah, and I notice uh, regularly with our analysts we chat with uh, for our Friday market report on grains, the uh, eastern seaboard was pretty congested in a sense when it came to the amount of crop that came off and how long it took to come off. But South Australian pricing, they've told me, is was you know a bit of a premium on it because we've generally been able to move our produce a bit better. But that was that more so a product of a lower sort of harvest last year. Uh, you know, we, our growing conditions weren't as good. Are we looking at a bigger harvest this year, potentially? Yeah, look, it's hard to tell at this stage. Um, you sort of don't want to count it until it's in the silos. But, um, yeah, we're, we, we are anticipating a, a well above average harvest. Um, I think if there's a little bit more rain, uh, which they are forecasting, then, yeah, we could be looking at some, some really big numbers um, come harvest time in South Australia. And you're right, we have seen, we've actually seen a lot of grain um coming into South Australia because our prices at Port, um, at Port Adelaide, etc., have been, um, you know, higher than, than in other states. So, um, yeah, a bit of, bit of movement on the grain front. And generally prices are held up pretty well. So um, even canola is sli- slightly down a little bit, but generally, um, yeah, really good pricing. And in saying that, we have to have good pricing because uh, cost of inputs are still very high. So your chemicals, fertilisers, fuel... Um, etc. is all still very high. Uh, so that, sort of, that that takes away a little bit of the, the gloss, I suppose you could say. Yeah, it's an interesting point you make about that stuff coming from uh, the eastern states uh, into South Australia on the basis of price. Even with the high fuel costs, the dollars must add up to go and chase that premium interstate. Yeah, it certainly does. Um, I've been talking to a couple of um, growers about that uh, interstate uh, on my travels um, and yes, they tell me that yeah, it's certainly worth doing so. Um, that's been happening. Uh, I mean, that's a product of, of the season, right? So normally um, quite a bit of grain goes out of South Australia the other way. So it's really just um, just the market at play. Now, I just assume as well that um, South Australia, generally with a drier profile than other states, we don't have the problems they're having in the Riverina of New South Wales where it has been too wet to seed and that sort of thing. We Generally, farmers have been able to get into paddocks and get the crop in. Yeah, definitely. No, we haven't. We haven't really had that problem. I think the only challenge with water um, has been uh, from the January storms on the Air Peninsula. There's still a bit of uh, still a bit of water sitting on on what was once productive cropping land. But in saying that, that that rainfall has also helped set up an absolute bumper season in the Air Peninsula. Um, and yeah, you're right. I know in New South Wales, um, yeah, there's been a lot of very late seeding and, and pictures of machinery bogged and all sorts of stuff. So it's, um, yeah, no, we, we're not having that problem here in South Australia. Now, there's uh, never a dull moment on the farm when it comes to, you know, trying to get away for a little bit, but it sounds like you've reached capacity for this growing SA conference next week uh, in Harndorf in the Adelaide Hills. Looks like farmers have been able to find some time to get along and hear from the latest from industry experts. Yeah, we're really looking forward to growing SA. Um, so it's a conference uh, the grain producers say and livestock SA put on together. Um, and uh, it's been a couple of years since we've held it due to, to COVID generally. Um, and we're really at almost a capacity, so it's been really popular. We're going to have an absolutely packed uh, Harndorf Convention Centre, um, and we're going to hear from some really exciting speakers about 
uh, around the theme of innovation, sustainability. Yeah, absolutely. And there would be two key themes, haven't they, when it comes to um, the, the future of the industry, well, at least in South Australia. But uh, the, the growing conditions, as you say, have been very good. Uh, and what is um, just an example of some of the speakers we might be hearing from? Yeah, I think it's really good as well that we've got the support of the state government. Um, we've got uh, the, the Minister for Primary Issues and Regional Development who will come and um, open the conference. So I think that's a sign of, of the importance of the conference to have that support um, and also uh, we've got some really good sponsors but we're going to um, really delve into some interesting areas so we've got um, the smart sat crc is going to talk about the connection between space and ag i think that's a really exciting um, innovation area um, and we've also got uh, dr madeline mitchell from the food agility crc she she delves into um, sustainability carbon natural capital so um, I, i've met her and spoken to her and she's a fantastic speaker uh, really looking forward to her um, we've got tony ma from the national farmers federation he'll be talking about the 100 billion dollar goal by 2030 um, so it'll be great to hear from him um, and also katie mcroberts from uh, a australian farm institute will be talking about um ag 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 it's a bit of a tongue twister, that it's one. It's a bit like fruit fly free. <laughs> it's hard to get your tongue around sometimes, some of these statements in agriculture. Um, so we'll also have, yeah, we've got a whole other um, uh, panel of speakers, uh, several panels of speakers, and we're going to delve into all sorts. So it's going to be um, really exciting, um, even from workforce to sustainability frameworks, soil, um, you know, innovation, ag tech, um, yeah, so much. I'm really looking forward to it. It's, I'm glad you mentioned Tony Ma from the National Farmers Federation because I must check in with um, A-Bears again as well. We, um, when it comes to that $100 billion production target for the nation, when it comes to agriculture, uh, we've talked fewer uh, since you know the last couple of years about the risk that we might just coast to that just on the back of uh, pricing premiums uh, due to the growing conditions and the global situation with Ukraine rather than those underlying investments in innovation and sustainability like you talk about. Yeah, no, it is. It's challenging when you set a target, um, and we've got to keep in mind that we've got till twenty thirty. So, um, you know, there's still still a significant amount of time to, to reach that goal. Um, I think you find too, as you'd know, Ricky, the value of agriculture does seem to fluctuate, and there's so many outliers. Um, you know, whether that be uh, the conflict in Ukraine or things that pop up that you don't expect. So it's really hard to look forward. But in saying that, I think it's really good. And really important um, for the industry to have a goal to work towards. So you're working together towards, um, you know, something that's really uh, exciting if you can reach it for agriculture in Australia. Now, we'll be, just lastly, we'll be sharing this chat with some of our uh, colleagues in New South Wales and Victoria. They're probably familiar with the New South Wales Farmers or Victorian Farmers Federation as a peak body. In South Australia, this growing SA conference has come together largely through this sort of collaboration across select commodity groups. We don't really have a peak. We have primary producers SA, but it's really the commodity-based groups that speak up on their particular issues rather than having a, a major peak spokesperson. So we've got yeah, primary producers SA um, recently was was actually um, given some funding by the state government. So it's probably the first time that we've actually had a really strong resource um, peak uh, body for South Australia that encompasses a number of the um, the ag commodity groups. Um, but the Growing SA conference has been running for a number of years now, and I think it really recognises that that you know a lot of our growers are live, have livestock as well. Uh, and vice versa for the livestock SA, um, you know, they grow grain. So it makes sense to have those two things coupled together. And a lot of the topics are really relevant. I mean, probably more towards ag in general, but for both livestock and grain, a lot of similar similarities. Um, I think it's important that we continue to work together and work together more in the future. And no doubt that's a message um, and something that's seen right across Australia as well. And uh, the Growing SA Conference is Monday, uh, sorry, Tuesday next week. Uh, if anyone listens, hears this interview and thinks, oh, I might try and get to that, you can look it up on the website, but I think it might be at capacity. But check it out on the Growing SA website. Brad, thanks so much for joining us. Brad Perry from Gro uh, Grain Producers SA. Thanks, Ricky. And we look forward to you emceeing the uh, conference as well. <laughs> thanks for the little plug there. Cheers.